Greetings and welcome in God's grace. Thank you for stopping by. This is the second video of the series that I put together based on biblical records. In my attempt to bring attention to a 76-year-old violent oppression by the Zionists against Palestinians, done in the name of the God of the Jews and Jesus the Messiah. Before we start, let me first offer my condolences and ask for forgiveness from Palestinian families for what the world has done to you and your children on behalf of the Messiah. I do not have enough words to ease the pain you are going through. I can assure you however that your children made it safely. This was guaranteed by Jesus in Matthew 5, verse 3. I can also guarantee you that the Zionists and their fake Christian supporters will not make it. The God of Abraham and the Gentiles is real and his commandments are his articles of life and death. The first video discussed the dual nature of Israel that God recorded in the Old Testament. This dual nature of Israel was designed in the image and likenesses of the God who knew both good and evil. That dual nature is present today as one group is called the Zionist Jews, whereas the other is their opposite, the Diaspora Jews. The Zionists are teamed up with the conservative white Christians of Europe, Canada, and America. And together, they had been murdering Arabs and Palestinians to protect their claims on the land God kicked Israel off in both the Old and New Testament. The focus of this video is to point out the danger that the conservative white Christians of the West pose to the safety of the world because of their interpretation of the scriptures. Since videos are for advocating for a peaceful solution in Palestine, I am going to point out how facts from the scriptures contradict support for the Zionists. The ongoing conflict is based on the land and this is a short summary but discussed in more detail in my book The Magnificence of the Three. According to the Old Testament, God promised Israel a piece of land in Genesis chapter 12 but was already occupied by other ethnic groups. God, however, promised them that even if they got the land as promised, he would take it from them if they continued to worship idols and violate the Ten Commandments. This warning was recorded in Leviticus chapter 26 and God eventually did as promised and kicked Israel off the land eventually. God warned in Leviticus also that even if Israel were to confess their inequities, the inequities of their fathers, and their unfaithfulness after, the land was still going to rest without them. It is this part of the scriptures that both Zionists and Christians continue to ignore today, an example of the danger conservative white Christians pose to the stability of the world. The Christians and Zionists point to Deuteronomy chapter 30 as approval for the return. So killing Palestinians and kicking them off the land is approved by God. What they don't tell you is that God did declare that Israel could return to the land, but conditions of abiding by the commandments were still mandatory. The unremorseful murders of Palestinian babies and the forceful taking of the lands violate the Ten Commandments and therefore contradict Deuteronomy chapter 30 as well. In that case, the Diaspora Jews are correct. The Messiah they are waiting for will not return as long as the land continues to drink the blood of Palestinians and their babies. The Christians normally cite scriptures from Jewish prophets like Jeremiah and Nehemiah who naturally fantasized about returning to the land, despite God's command in Leviticus. God specifically told Israel that once you lose the land, you would not return to it as the land never rested while you were on it. See Leviticus chapter 26, verses 34 to 35, and 40 to 43. Here are biblical facts that I recommend to the diaspora Jews and the few remaining white Jesus Christians to include in deciding whether the Zionist is the pagan side of Israel as explained in first video. So the first biblical fact was that God ordered Israel not to worship idols and if they did, he would kick them off the land. Israel disobeyed and God kicked them off the land first in the Old Testament, and as if for emphasis, in the New Testament for crying out loud. The second fact was evidence of continuing disobedience by Israel. God used the Assyrians and Babylonians to remove them from the land as promised in Leviticus. After the Babylonians released them from slavery, some returned to the land, and leaders with prophets decided to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. The third fact was the decision to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. God told them in Leviticus that the land was to be left to rest once they were kicked off as it never rested when they were on it, even if they humbled themselves and confessed their iniquities. 
Israel did not listen and they rebuilt Jerusalem and the temple. Jesus, whom the Christians refer to as the Messiah showed up and was born in this rebuilt Jerusalem. When Jesus was born, a group of violent Europeans known as the Romans were in control of this second Jerusalem and the temple already. These Romans ended up crucifying Jesus. According to records, Jesus rose from the grave and when he met his disciples, they asked him whether he was going to restore the kingdom of Israel. Jesus told them then that it was not their business but God's. This is recorded in the book of Acts 1. You will not find this response in a Christian's answer when questioned about their support for the killings and murders of Palestinians over the land God kicked Israel out of. The fourth fact is very important. The destruction of the rebuilt Jerusalem and the second temple. While leaving the temple one time, the disciples pointed out its magnificence and beauty to Jesus. Jesus was not impressed however and told them that not one stone of that temple would be left on another as each one would be thrown down. This was how Jesus foretold the destruction of the temple then as recorded in Matthew 24, verses 1 to 2. These violent Romans then crucified the Christian's Messiah. The Romans later on in the year 70 AD burned Jerusalem and the temple to the ground just as Jesus told them, and the Romans again took the Israelites as slaves. The destruction of the second temple provided a direct piece of evidence that was consistent with the curse of Leviticus chapter 26. The land was to be left to rest. Israel chose to listen to prophets over God and God sent the Romans to remind them of their disobediences. They not only destroyed Jerusalem but took Israel as slaves for the third time. So off they went to face the violent European Christians for the next 1800 some years until 1948 when these white Christians of Europe and America decided also to disobey God. They created the Zionist state of Israel in contradiction of God's plans. Prior to the return of these Euro-blooded Zionists, the Jews, Arabs, Palestinians, and Christians had been living amongst one another in peace raising families and practicing their religions. Since then, these Euro-blooded Zionists and supporting Christians have been killing and murdering Abraham's descendants in violation of the commandments. The fifth fact involves the question as to Jesus whether he was the true Messiah. Both pagan Zionists and Diaspora Jews say he was not. According to the Jews, the land was going to be restored to Israel when the Messiah showed up. The Diaspora Jews are still waiting for this Messiah. This is why they refused to enter the Holy Land. The Zionists did not wait but decided to take the land without waiting for him. The Christians, however, claimed that Jesus was the Messiah. But when he was asked by his disciples whether he would restore the Kingdom of Israel, he told them to mind their own businesses as it was not for them to know God's plans. This is one reason why the Jews claim that Jesus was a fake Messiah as he did not restore the Kingdom of Israel. Yet, the white Christians of the West had been encouraging the killing and murder of Palestinians including babies over this land that Jesus specifically said in the scriptures not to mess with it. So what gives? Since the white Christians of the West ignore Jesus' message, are they saying Jesus was a fake Messiah as Jews claim? The sixth fact is this. Since the white Christians of the West overrode Leviticus chapter 26 and Jesus' command in favor of the Zionists, they no longer follow Jesus but the pagan Zionists. As murder and stealing from neighbors are forbidden in biblical laws, the violence and murders of Palestinians in support of the Zionists means that the white Christians of the West now worship the Zionists. The Zionists are now the Christians' pagan gods. This relationship is similar to the relationship the pagan side of Israel had with the pagan idol god Baal in the Old Testament. Remember that Israel burned their sons on their altars as offerings to their idol god Baal as recorded in the book of Jeremiah 19. This was an abomination then to God and I am not sure why Christians in general think murdering babies will be acceptable today. What the pagan Israelites did then that angered God, is similar to the relationship developed today between white Christians of the West and the Zionists. If there is any evidence that the Zionists represent the idol-worshipping side of Israel from the Old Testament, then the murders of these babies in 2023 and 2024 provide indisputable evidence in support of insinuation.
The financial support and turning a blind eye by white Christians of the West to the killings and murders of children amount to offering dead Palestinian babies to Zionists as if to appease them for blessings. How horrible! Of course, unless the Messiah was a fake, then it makes sense why murdering babies and children is acceptable. The seventh fact is this. The Christian support for Zionist policies is rooted in interpretations of the scriptures by white Christian males of the West. While preaching the Ten Commandments and loving thy neighbor as the second most important commandment, the history of these European Christians included stealing and murdering one another, especially colored ethnic groups. The Americans, for example, kidnapped blacks from Africa and enslaved them in the name of Jesus. The Palestinians are the modern sacrifices of colored people to appease the thirst for blood as typical with the history of white Christians of the West. The deliberate killing of babies in hospitals in 2023 and 2024 is a known trait of modern European Christians. The American slave owners did it to enslaved blacks and Christian Nazis did it to the Jews. Considering the atrocious violence despite the rule of law set by God and the commandments, then there may be some validity to the allegations that the majority of those claiming Zionist Jews are white people. There are unconfirmed allegations that DNA testing is forbidden in Israel. The reason is that most Zionists in Israel are not Jews but common white people who moved there since there were free or low-cost lands offered by the government to all comers. The culture of violence and lawlessness in the face of the commandments by the Zionists supports the allegations that these are not Jews but just common white people. Even worse is the known fact that of all the Arabs, DNA testing has proven that Palestinians are close cousins of the Jews. Ignoring both the DNA results as well as the commandments that forbade murders and stealing from neighbors, support claims that these Zionists are just white people repeating their past habits of murder and stealing. Both Euro-blooded Christians and Zionists think alike, and the foundations of these atrocities done to Palestinians are justified by how both interpret the scriptures. Both communities accept violence as a biblical culture and normal means of doing business. Both use God's name as justification. Both communities accept violence as a biblical culture while preaching to children that their God is merciful and loving. Meanwhile, the majority of reputable surveys show a steady decline in Christianity in America and Europe. The reason behind it is not that hard to figure out when even children with limited education can see the evil festering in these Christian churches and are out there protesting against the murders of Palestinians. Based on the interpretation of the scriptures by white conservative Christians, it is now an acceptable value and policy of Christianity to murder babies on behalf of anyone who claims to be a Jew. Those are facts for you to apply in determining whether the interpretation of the scriptures by white male Christians poses a serious threat to the stability of the world. Here is a short summary of facts. First, God promised Israel that he would kick them off the land if they violated the commandments and worshipped idols. They did and God used the Assyrians and Babylonians to fulfill this prophecy who took Israel as slaves and destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. Second fact. Israel ignored what God told them in Leviticus to get off the land and to stay off. So when they returned from slavery, they rebuilt Jerusalem and the temple. Third fact. Jesus, whom the white Christians of the West called the Messiah, refused to restore the kingdom of Israel, but this was expected of him according to the Jews. Fourth fact. As consistent with the command recorded in Leviticus and Jesus' response in Acts 1, God sent the pagan Romans to destroy Jerusalem and the Second Temple, and again took Israel as slaves. Fifth fact. Since the Messiah was supposed to restore the kingdom of Israel but didn't, and white Christians chose to support the Zionists who entered the land without God's approval, Jesus is no longer a messiah to them. Sixth fact, by ignoring what Jesus commanded about the land, and Christians chose to side with Zionists who entered the land without Jesus' approval, the white Christians have denied Jesus and have chosen the Zionists as their pagan god. Seventh fact, the interpretation of the scriptures had been left to the discretion of white men of Europe and America with a history of violent wars and murders of men, women and children. Today, apparently, the scriptures they are using allow for the support of murdering helpless children in hospitals and refugee camps. 
This is the summary of facts that I ask you to apply in determining whether we will all bear the burden when we face God in the end. Since God is real and children are innocent to him, then protect your righteousness blessings by speaking up against these evil fake Christians by refusing to support their churches. The interpretation of the scriptures is so vile that I confronted Christians online for the murder of these children. They directed me to the Old Testament telling me that God killed children there. So who was I to judge? The support for the Zionists means the white Christians prefer and value the Zionists over Jesus. Children recognize this type of ignorant hypocrisy the church is famous for and are choosing evolution and science over God. Children can easily see that the 76 years of the killings and murders of Palestinians over the land confirm accusations by the Jews that Jesus was a fake messiah. The interpretation of the scriptures by these white Christians makes the messiah look like a fool in the eyes of children. It is a sad case for sure when atheists and children stand up for Palestinians while Christians call for their murders in the name of Jesus. God also specifically commanded Israel saying that they were to have the same rules for them and the foreigner residing among them and this was a lasting ordinance for generations to come. The same laws and regulations would apply both to Israel and to the foreigners residing among them. You can find this law plainly in the book of Numbers 15, verse 15. The Palestinians however are not foreigners but Abraham's descendants and cousins to the Jews by blood. Only bloodthirsty idol worshippers would ignore this command since they don't believe in God. Based on command in numbers, the atrocious murders of neighbors committed by Zionists and conservative white Christians violate the 6th, 8th, 9th, and 10th commandments. Jesus emphasized giving your coat to a stranger, mourn for others, be merciful, be peacemakers, forgive others including enemies, and honor the loving thy neighbor like loving thyself command. These are meaningless to the white Christians of the West, especially the Americans. Violence and racism are their cultural values unfortunately. They are not just a danger to the world but to themselves, as they had not only been calling for the final battle to end civilization according to their versions of the scriptures, but they had been calling for a civil war among themselves. Their cravings for violence are founded on their interpretations of the scriptures while ignoring Jesus. If there's nobody to murder, they have no problems killing one another. They are now calling for a civil war. This is it for this video. Hope you watched the first video discussing the dual nature of Israelites as God designed them. There are two sides to Israel today. The Zionists who are murdering babies and the diaspora Jews who refuse to enter the state the Zionists created. This second video is to establish the danger posed to the world as a result of interpretations of the scriptures by the white conservative Christian males of the West and their sheeps. The controlling authorities regarding the once promised land are Leviticus chapter 26, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and Acts 1. All others are dreams and fantasies by mortals, therefore secondary. Stay tuned for the third video of the series as it is about how God replaced the promised land the Zionists are murdering Palestinians over, with the lands that came to be identified as the American lands. You can find more about this subject in my book titled The Magnificence of the Three, which is available on Amazon, iTunes, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. Thank you for watching. If the video promotes your biblical values, Please share so our children can reshape their world to be better than what we left for them based on the scriptures. Till next time, please reread the Sermon on the Mount again as this was Jesus. May his blessings be upon you always.